Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about MR arthrography, or as my daughter says, Mr. Arthrography. <laughs> so um, just a few learning objectives here. Um, we uh, want you to know what an arthro MR arthrogram is, why we perform them, how we, do, how we perform them, and uh, what some of the images look like. So what's an arthrogram? So at its core, arthrogram is imaging of a joint after the injection of contrast into the joint. So I want you to understand that. We're actually putting a needle into the joint and injecting contrast. Uh, traditionally, it's, it's done with iodinated contrast and x-rays. And, uh, and with MR arthrogram, which is MRI imaging, it's imaging of the joint after we inject gadolinium uh, contrast. Um, and just as disclosure, uh, none of the gadolinium agents are approved by the FDA uh, for this. This is an off-label use, but it's been done for years and it's done everywhere. Uh, so why do an arthrogram? Just uh, some indications here for the shoulder. We might look for uh, glenoid labral tears. We can see rotator cuff tendon tears. In the hip, uh, acetabular labral, labral tears for surgical planning. In the wrist, we look, for, look at the ligaments. The scaphalunate lunar triquetral ligaments are commonly damaged. And also for the uh, triangular fiber cartilage complex tears. In the elbow, talked about the elbow kind of a little bit earlier. We look at those collateral ligaments that uh, other people have alluded to, and we'll look at some pictures of that. So how do we perform an orthogram? So here's uh, Mr. Orthogram here. This is Dr. Miller. He's one of our uh, radiologists and patients here on the table. Heads up here, feet down here. This is actually a right hip. Patient's on the uh, x-ray table here. Um, you can see he's got his lead on. He's all ready to go. Anything that comes, uh, the x-rays are going to come from the bottom to this image intensifier here, and the image is going to show up here. So he's using this, these x-rays to guide his procedure. So what are we injecting? Um, it, the makeup of the uh, cocktail, per se, it varies on the joints you're going to inject, uh, what the uh, referring physician wants us to inject. This is kind of a typical shoulder um, recipe, I guess you'd say. Uh, normal saline. Uh, the five cc's of iodinated contrast, and that's in there. So because he's using x-rays to guide him as far as where the needle is, that's why that iodinated contrast is there. Um, your uh, clinician uh, may request that we put some anesthetic or steroids in the joint. And then here's our magic ingredient for uh, MR, arth MR arthrography. is just basically uh, drop. I mean, it's just 0.1 cc, so you're probably familiar with the TB syringe. It's the, the lowest... Uh, mark on your TB syringe. So it's a very small amount. Turns out if you put too much gadolinium, you start to lose signal just because of some physics, basically. Um, and then for the skin, we use lidocaine there. So here's our setup. Got our cocktail here and the uh, 20 cc syringe. This is the uh, smaller syringe for uh, skin anesthesia. And this is our uh, three and one half inch 22 gauge spinal needle that we use for. Um, hips and shoulders. So he's set up here, like I said, he's, he sees his image here. Uh, he knows right where he wants to go. He's cleansed uh, you know, the skin, anesthetized the soft tissues, and he's going drilling right down to where he wants to go. We hook up the, uh, our cocktail here, inject. We've got a little bit of iodinated contrast in there so we can see it. He knows he's in the joint, he knows he's in the right place. This is, what, this is the image, this is a typical hip image. Many different approaches, but uh, femoral head here, acetabulum here, just to get, I know y'all all know anatomy, right? <laughs> At least, okay, so, um, and then, so after we inject, we're off to MR. This is our MRI uh, suite at Advanced MRI. You can come hang out at the beach with us. Okay, so um, now I'm gonna go through some anatomy um, some common pathologies. It's not all inclusive of anatomy. It's not all inclusive of pathology, but I'm going to try to hit some highlights, things you've probably heard of uh, in your practice. So we'll start off with the shoulder. So just um, Again, this is going to be the fluoroscopic image of uh, when uh, Dr. Miller, or whomever the radiologist of the day is, is injecting. This is our little needle, our needle right here, three and one half inch, 22 gauge needle. And he's put it uh, right where he wants to be, injected the contrast, and we're off to MR. Looks like it projects pretty well. Okay, so right side of the screen, this is a, uh, a traditional MRI without any injected contrast. 
we've got uh, humeral head here, glenoid. Here, this is our MR arthrogram image. Humeral head here, glenoid. What is this structure? Biceps tendon, long head biceps tendon. A little further back, again, humeral head glenoid, humeral head glenoid. What's this structure here? Supraspinatus tendon. I want you also to look at the glenoid labrum here. It's triangular shaped. We got some gray cartilage there. I'll move my pointer out of the way. Okay, that was a coronal. We're looking at a sagittal here, so from the side. Humeral head, coracoid, to get you oriented, here's the uh, AC joint. And we see our long head biceps tendon over here. Go through the anatomy here. We have a supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and the subscapularis, tends to the rotator cuff. Axial view, both normal. Humeral head, just uh, I guess somebody said loaf of bread, or just basically cut like a slice of bread looking from the top. Uh, humeral head, glenoid, glenoid labrum. See the long head biceps tendon here. And the white stuff on all these images, that's the contrast that we've injected. All right, first case. Okay, got the normal on the left. Go through the anatomy with supraspinatus tendon here. Nice, sharp glenoid labrum on the right. Humeral head, glenoid, go look at the labrum. What do we have? We've got contrast extending into a tear there. Axial image, normal. And uh, this may be a little bit hard to see, but um, we, um, you can see the contrast going into the base of that labrum, that superior labrum from anterior to posterior. Same images here, both abnormal. It's a glenoid labral tear. But more specifically, it's a slap tear. Who's heard of a slap tear? Have y'all heard of slap tears? All right, good. There you go. <laughs> Dr. Cassie has heard of them. That's good. Uh, uh, so, um, so slap tear, superior labral tear from anterior to posterior, kind of what we talked about, what I described earlier. Just some, you know, word slides. Um, so uh, at its heart, it's a tear of the superior aspect of the glenoid labrum. It can vary from simple fraying all the way to uh, fragmentation of the whole bicipital labral uh, complex to a bucket handle tear. And it can extend into surrounding structures, anterior labrum, posterior labrum, or even the middle glenoid humeral ligament. Next case. Okay, so we have a normal here, an abnormal here. What I want you to look at here, normal cartilage. Look over here, normal cartilage, normal cartilage, boom. What's that? Contrast is filling a defect glenoid cartilage fracture. Um, more specifically, if you know what a slap tear, this is called a GLAD. And when you get into the shoulder, it's kind of an alphabet soup of, of uh, abbreviations, but this is a glenoid labral articular disruption. Uh, we go a little bit further down, there's kind of a clue as to what probably happened. There's a little dent here in the back of the humerus. That at one point was there. You got a little tear in the anterior aspect of the glenoid labrum. And nice little sliver of something. What is it? Here we go down a little further. That's our loose cartilage. That's our, 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 our uh, loose body. Here it is here. We're looking on the sagittal. It's a nice view. You can see the, the uh, loose body here, and I can see where it came from, the donor site. And MR arthrography is, is as you see, it's given a lot of, it's distending the joint and uh, allowing us to see that pretty well. The coronal, beautiful picture. Okay, normal, supraspinatus tendon here. Come over here. We should have a nice supraspinatus tendon coming across, keeping this fluid from going into the subacromial, subdeltoid bursa, but it, it's not there, it's torn. You see the free end there. From the sagittal side, looking from the side, you know, we should have nice supraspinatus, infraspinatus, it's gone. Contrast is completely filling it. And I, can't, I don't see the long head biceps tendon either, normal on this side, so that's ruptured as well. Um, this is the same case, just two views. Okay, again, this is easy, right? Y'all are, are getting it now. Supraspinatus tendon coming across here. Gone. Oh, it's retracted. What's going on here? There's a lot of DJD of this acromioclavicular joint. Um, as y'all know, uh, you know, impingement is a clinical diagnosis. We'll describe the findings and then let uh, the clinicians decide if that is clinically relevant. Uh, same case, nice tear of supraspinatus. 
All right, hips. Um, this is basically the uh, fluoroscopic image that uh, Dr. Miller's Mr. Arthrography is going to be looking at. Um, hum uh, femoral head here, acetabulum. A lot of different types of ways to approach this, uh, the injection site that is. Uh, here's our normal. So femoral head, uh, greater trochanter, uh, acetabulum here. These are the uh, gluteal tendons and abnormal. Is that showing up pretty well? Yeah. Uh, so again, there's a lot of contrast with these and we manipulate the technique to, to bring out that contrast, basically black and white. We like that. Um, and we'll see here, um, compared to the normal non-MR arthrogram, we've distended the joint and we're able to see that acetabular labrum, which is right there. Axial view, get you oriented here again. Uh, femoral head, neck, acetabulum. Uh, this one's a little oblique, but here, femoral head, acetabulum, anterior, acetabular labral, anterior, posterior, got your ileus psoas muscle here. Uh, looking from the side, hip looking from the side, we've got femoral head here, acetabulum, acetabular labral here, labrum here. Again, you know, the acetabular labrum is uh, one of the main things we're looking at when we're doing an MR arthrogram, so I'm just kind of kind of run through some basic, you know, anatomy on that. Um, it's a fibrocartilaginous rim which deepens the acetabulum, it attaches to the osseous uh, acetabular rim and the transverse acetabular ligament down here. You got the ligament teres here. Um, and the joint capsule attaches to the acetabular rim adjacent to the labrum. So here we, we've got normal again, femoral head, nice sharp acetabular labrum. On the right side of the screen, femoral head. There's the acetabular labrum. It's got a little white signal in it. That's that contrast that we've injected. The general principle being we inject the contrast and see where it goes. If it goes in an abnormal location, then we've got problems. So that's a tear of the acetabular labrum. Next case, uh, femoral head here, acetabular labrum here, femoral head here. Nice little defect there. We can see the contrast going into the tear. Sagittal view, a little bit more subtle, but black diamond here has some white signal in it. Same case. Let's tear the acetabular labrum. So, um, just a little blurb about the acetabular labral tears. Um, uh, anterior superior and posterior superior labrum are most commonly common locations for tear. Um, at the base of the labrum, we can get detachments, or there can also be tears of the long axis. Um, and, and again, the principle for MR arthrography is that the contrast is going to fill the joint um, and distend the capsule. And if there's a, a detachment, we'll be able to lift that up. That's the theory, at least. So the causes of tears, um, I guess top three, osteoarthritis, hip dysplasia, and femoroacetabular impingement. I'm sure, has everybody heard of femoroacetabular impingement? No? Okay, well, we'll talk about it. That's good. One, <laughs> all right. So um, i put this here just because you, uh, it is probably some, something you're going to hear about. So femoroacetabular impingement is the cause of uh, arthritis in the hip, especially in young and active people. And essentially it's uh, due to impingement between skeletal prominences of the acetabulum uh, and femur, which are going to li limit the uh, range of motion, which you all know much more about than I do. It occurs typically in flexion and internal rotation. Um, and interesting, t patients are typically aware of their uh, limited mobility uh, before surgery. And the two basic types um, are CAM and pincer impingement. So CAM, this is the femoral part of it, femoral cause of F FAI. Uh, basically, it's an aspherical femoral head neck junction, which is going to contact the acetabulum. And I'm going to show you pictures, so we'll get through these word slides. Uh, results in abrasion of the cartilage, uh, of the cartilage, or it's avulsion from the labrum, um, and it can result in labral tears. So this is all those words are talking about this. This is our oblique. We've seen some normals. This is our femoral head here, neck, and this um, head neck junction is is widened, and it's not only widened; it's kind of pooched out here. 
And what happens in that uh, internal rotation? This is swinging over, boom, tear, boom, tear. So we've torn our acetabular labrum here. There are some ways to, to quantify that. Uh, it's called the alpha angle. In case you ever uh, hear that term, you can at least say you've seen a picture. Um, then there's pincer. This is going to be your acetabular uh, cause of, of, AF, of FAI. Um, and it can be due to focal or generalized overcoverage of the femoral head by the acetabulum. Um, or the, and it, it can also be the result of an, an abnormally large or retroverted uh, acetabulum. So here, this would be our pincer. You can see again, femoral head, acetabulum. We've overcovered this compared to normal. You know, this is hanging down way too far. Again, there are some ways to measure this, but I, I think we can all kind of agree that this is hanging down too large and it's gonna get uh, damaged when, with uh, internal rotation and flexion. Um, so here's another case of FAI. And I put this slide in here. Um, this is oblique sagittal. So this is our femoral head here. That's tabular labrum. Um, basically, this, uh, to point out this cyst, this is a, uh, can occur, again, due to this impaction. We've got the tear of the acetabular labrum from the impaction. You can also kind of just do a little micro disruption of that cortex, which is going to allow some joint fluid to, fall, to go in there to extend into the, into the small cyst. Um, you know, what's interesting is that when I started uh, my training in radiology, this was considered essentially a, 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 almost a normal variant. It was, we call it Pitt's pit. That's what's the synovial herniation pit. But as we become more sophisticated and uh, learn more about the hip, um, we know that this is actually a sign of femoroacetabular impingement. And likewise, an os acetabuli. Uh, when I began training, we, would, we considered that a normal, uh, basically a normal variant. Um, but what we're talking about here, again, oblique sagittal femoral head, acetabulum, anterior acetabulum. We're pointing out little fragments of bone right here. So, uh, you know, 15 years ago, uh, we would have considered this a, a normal variant. Now, at least in the radiology literature, the teaching is that this is a, uh, a stress fracture resulting from just constant bang, bang, bang of the femur against the uh, acetabulum. So again, a sign of femoroacetabular impingement. Okay, this is our normal here, and I'll present to you that this is abnormal. It's not gonna, it doesn't really project well. It's uh, uh, kind of enlarged and overcovers. Um, and I don't, there is actually an os acetabular right there. And uh, instead of having a nice sharp uh, acetabular labrum here, this one's uh, blunted and torn. And as Dr. Uh, Cassio uh, can tell us, uh, you know, these, here's your acetabular, os acetabuli right here. These processes are often seen bilaterally, and you got another one here. So both hips. Okay, the wrist. We can stick needles pretty much anywhere and inject contrast. Uh, the wrist is another place we look. Uh, just to get you oriented, distal radius, distal ulna, carpal bones, um, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, the uh, pisiform sitting right here, hook of the hamate right here. We're going to, uh, under fluoroscopic guidance, we're going to inject that contrast if we're in the, in the right spot. I'm going to show you some normals just to, again, get people kind of oriented. Uh, you know, you, you can't die without saying you haven't seen a, or haven't seen a coronal MRI of the wrist. <laughs> um, so this is thumb over here. These are tendons here. It's a coronal view, doing like this. Hook of the hamate here. A little bit uh, further back, distal radius, ulna, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, capitate. This, is this little dark spot, this is the distal radial ulnar joint, the drudge, you probably heard of that. Uh, triangular fiber cartilage complex right here. So I want you to know scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, triangular fiber cartilage complex. For MR arthrography, those are, that's where the money is. Axial view, um, distal radius, ulna. Uh, it's our, they don't project real well, but our radial uh, ulnar uh, ligaments right here. Extensor carpi ulnaris here. A little bit uh, further down, Hook of the hamate, uh, trapezium. We got the flexor retinaculum here. So that makes this the carpal tunnel. Median nerve is going to live right in there. And Dr. Weber, when he is going to do a carpal tunnel release, he's going to cut that right there. Sagittal view, 
uh, uh, pisiform here sitting on the triquetrum. So uh, when we're doing MR arthrography of the wrist, uh, we look at a lot of things, but uh, a few of the more important things we look at are the scaphalunate ligament, lunar triquetral ligament, and the triangular fiber cartilage complex, the TFCC. Uh, you can't say the words TFCC in radiology without going through this slide. <laughs> These are the components of the T triangular fiber cartilage complex. Up here at the top, most important when, when we're looking at MR arthrography is that triangular fiber cartilage. Uh, also, the radio ulnar ligaments, I showed you that on the axial, menisca homolo meniscus homolog, um, which is kind of an inconsistently found um, portion, uh, ulnar collateral ligament, and the uh, tendon sheath extinctor carpi um, ulnaris. Okay, so these are both normal. Distal radius, ulna, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum. This is the disc of the triangular fiber cartilage complex, and it kind of looks like a uh, meniscus in the knee because it's essentially the same uh, makeup. And uh, we've got it labeled here, disc, this is our disc of the um, triangular fiber cartilage complex. Um, scaphalunate, the ligaments. Um, scaphalunate ligament basically goes from the scaphoid uh, to the lunate. Um, it uh, essentially stabilizes the wrist, and there's some clinical conditions uh, that occur if it's ruptured. That's why we're doing the study. Um, it can, in addition to traumatic injuries, this can occur, you know, in your field. It, it can, they can have attritional tears. Uh, lunar triquetral ligament, it's going to go from your lunate uh, to your triquetrum. Uh, it's going to also basically stabilize the wrist and it tears. So here's our another normal distal radius, ulna, scaphoid, uh, scaphoid lunate. Ligament's going to go in right here. Lunate triqu triquetrum, right here. Again, another look at the disc of the TFCC. First case, normal here. And then distal radius, ulna. This is our scaphoid here, lunate here. We've injected contrast, where is it gone? It's gone com through a complete rupture of that scaphoid lunate ligament to extravasate into the mid-carpal row. The lunar triquetral ligament here, it's, it's difficult to see, but it was actually intact. Um, again, normal, scaphalinate, lunate triquetral. Um, we've injected contrast into this space right here. Where has it gone? It's essentially gone everywhere. We've got a rupture of the scaphalinate ligament. We've got a rupture of the lunar triquetral ligament. And there's uh, essentially no uh, disc of the triangular fiber cartilage complex to, uh, to speak of. And we've, our contrast is extended into the, to the distal radial ulnar mm -hmm. joint. Uh, elbow, just kind of finishing up here. So this is our, our uh, fluoroscopic image. Um, uh, we've taken a, a lateral approach, shooting for the radial head. Got our contrast here. This is humerus, radius, ulna. Uh, going through the normal axial view. So again, like a sliced loaf of bread. This is the uh, distal aspect of the humerus. Uh, this is the... Um, with our arthrogram, we've injected the contrast. It's filled the uh, olecranon fossa. Why is that important? Because you can get loose bodies that'll, that'll like to hang out in here. Um, let's see, anatomy. Uh, here's your biceps right here, brachialis here. A little bit further down, uh, we're getting into the uh, so distal humerus uh, olecranon here. This is lateral. This is medial. Um, uh, what occurs laterally, we have our uh, common extensor tendons. That's our uh, uh, tennis elbow. We've got our common uh, flexor tendons here. That'd be our, uh, I guess, golfer's elbow. Brachialis here and uh, biceps tendon. Further down, this is kind of beyond MR arthrography, but it's such a beautiful picture of the of the long head of the uh, I'm sorry, the biceps brachii inserting on the radial tuberosity. And they've talked about tears. Well, when tears happen, a lot of times they happen right there. Another, I couldn't resist putting this one in here either because it just shows this is our biceps tendon. I hope it projects. This is our uh, biceps tendon inserting right here on the uh, radial tuberosity. Um, other speakers have alluded to this ligament, the uh, ulnar collateral ligament. Its origin is the inferior uh, surface of the medial epicondyle. It starts on the, on the coronoid of the, uh, of the uh, uh, ulna. Um, 
uh, it has three bands, uh, anterior, posterior, and uh, a transverse. The anterior band is uh, most important. It's going to re resist that valgus stress. Um, and tears are often uh, the result of uh, repetitive uh, activities such as overhand throwing. So the other name for this is the Tommy John ligament. We talked about that. Or other people talked about that. So here we go. Um, that's it right there. So distal humerus, radius on this side, uh, ulna on this side. That nice little black line right there. And uh, again, we use MR arthrography to look at this because we've injected contrast. We want to see where it goes. So we're going to distend the joint. Here it's intact. It's sitting right nice and tight against that sublime tubercle. Radial collateral ligament, that's going to be on the other side. Uh, origins the uh, lateral epicondyle and it's going to insert on the uh, radius. Uh, tears are often associated with uh, lateral epicondylitis, uh, tennis elbow, um, and they can be seen with various stress and elbow dislocations. So we got here, here's our nice radial collateral ligament here, distal humerus, radius, ulna. Uh, so here's a uh, Normal here, just a little a magged up view. Ulnar collateral ligament here, nice and tight, nicely seated on the sublime tubercle. Inject contrast. What happens in this case? The contrast has slipped around there, and it's actually extended um, between the sublime tubercle and the UCL, uh, compatible with the tear. Here's a look at your radial collateral ligament. Um, and then here, so we have normal radial collateral ligament here. MR arthrogram. We've injected. Where is it gone? It's gone right through a tear here. Okay, so that's it. Uh, hope you learned something. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Thanks to my uh, technologists who kind of helped me put this together. Um, I'm sure it's like with physical therapists, you know, the radiologist uh, is very dependent on a good technologist and I want to acknowledge them.